Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about aneurysmal bone cyst. In our previous lectures, we have studied about ossifying fibroma, fibrous dysplasia, osseous dysplasia, central giant cell granuloma and cherubism. And today we will discuss about aneurysmal bone cyst. It is an intraosseous accumulation of variable size in a blood filled spaces surrounded by cellular fibrous connective tissue that often is admixed with the trabeculi of reactive woven bone. Uh, if we talk about the cause and pathogenesis, then we will say that it is poorly understood. Several investigators think that it arises from the traumatic event, vascular malformation or neoplasm that disrupts the normal osseous hemodynamics and leads to an enlarging hemorrhagic extravasation. And some suggest that aneurysmal bone cyst and giant cell granulomas are closely related. And some others suggest that it may occur either as a primary lesion or as a result of a, a disrupted vascular dynamics in a pre-existing intrabony lesions. Chromosomal abnormalities in some cases may be there, particularly those involving 17p11 to 13 and 16q22. Uh, However, the significance of these chromosomal abnormalities in the molecular pathogenesis of the aneurysmal bone cyst remains unclear. Okay, now we'll discuss about clinical and radiographic features. So, most commonly, it involves uh, the shaft of a long bone or invertebral column in a patient younger than age 30. Natic aneurysmal bone cysts are very uncommon with approximately 2% reported from the jaws. So, it means it is very less common uh, as far as uh, our, you know, uh, a field of uh, interest is concerned, that is head and neck, okay. So, most Cases arise in the children and young adults with an approximate mean age of 20 years. There is no any sex predilection. The mandible is most commonly involved and uh, the posterior segment which includes the angle and ramus are most commonly involved in these cases. Okay, so most common clinical manifestation is rapid swelling. There may be pain and paresthesia. Compressibility and crepitus are rarely seen. In some cases there may be malocclusion, mobility, migration or resorption of the involved teeth. Maxillary lesion often bulge into the adjacent sinus but nasal obstruction, nasal bleeding, proptosis and diplopia are uncommon. If you talk about radiographic features, it shows unilocular or multilocular radiolucent lesion with marked cortical expansion and thinning. The borders are variable and may be well defined or diffuse. So this is the characteristic feature of uh, uh, characteristic radiographic feature of uh, aneurysmal bone cyst. Fre frequently there will be ballooning or blow out distension of the contour of the affected bone. Uncommonly there can be small radiopaque foci that thought, thought to be small trabeculi of the reactive bone and they are noted within the radiolucencies. So here the image of a patient which is having uh, this radiolucent lesion at the ascending ramus and this is the aneurysmal bone cyst. We can see uni unilocular radiolucency present here. We cannot see other locules. So basically it is unilocular radiolucent lesion. Okay. At the time of the surgery, uh, we can see intact periosteum and a thin shell of bone are typically found. Cortical perforation may occur, but spread into the adjacent soft tissue has not been documented. When the periosteum and bony shell are removed, dark venous blood frequently wells up and venous-like bleeding may be encountered. And all these things may give uh, the blood-soaked sponge-like appearance. Okay, now we'll discuss about histopathological features. Spaces of varying size filled with unclotted blood surrounded by cellular fibroblastic tissue containing multinucleated giant cells and trabeculi of osteoid and woman bone. Sometimes there may be the wall contains an unusual lace-like pattern of calcification that is uncommon in other intraosseous lesions. The blood-filled spaces are not lined by endothelium, so it is a characteristic feature as far as histopathological feature is concerned. 20% of the cases there may be associated with another pathosis, most commonly a fibrosis lesion or a giant cell granuloma. Now we will discuss about treatment and prognosis. Curettage or enucleation and sometimes supplemented with cryosurgery, this will be the main you know, mode of management of these lesions. 
The vascularity of the natic lesion is typically low flow and removal of the bulk of the lesion is usually sufficient to control the bleeding. In very rare cases, the extensive surgical resection will be needed. Mostly there will be, uh, you know, the surgical defect heals within 6 months to 1 year and does not necessitate bone grafting. Irradiation is contraindicated similar like our, uh, you know, other lesion that we have discussed is the cherubism. In cherubism and in aneurysmal bone cyst, we do not recommend irradiation or radiation. Okay, recurrence rate is variable. It may be as low as 8% and as high as 60%. Most recurrent example arise from inadequate or subtotal removal or on initial therapy. On occasion, recurrence may be related to incomplete removal of a coexisting lesion such as an osteoblastoma or ossifying fibroma. If we talk about long-term prognosis, then we will say that it is favorable. So these are the references of uh, this lecture. Hopefully you enjoyed my lecture and if you enjoy my lecture, please uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, till my next lecture, take care, bye-bye.